And today, it's time to cook the cauliflower cheese. First of all, I need to get this hair out of the way. Now, to start with, we need a good non-stick pan. And here I have a not very good non-stick pan, but it will have to do. Now this item is called an onion. What? You can't cook without onions. You can say you don't like onions, but you have to have onions. Without an onion, it's not going to taste anywhere near as good. We need to cut the onion up into small pieces. So you need a really very sharp knife indeed. And this one's blunt. Look, never used to be able to do that. Doesn't really work too well now, so I've got to apply much more pressure on it. Yeah, after time knives will go blunt. But they'll go blunt much more quickly if you use a glass chopping board. Oh, how do people think that's a good idea? It's really not. I like a bit of raw onion, but that cutting process didn't go quite as well as I was hoping. Hot ring! And a non-stick pan with olive oil and butter. Once that's melted properly, I can chuck in this whole load of onions, which I didn't do a very good job of cutting up. But that's fine, I've already explained. My knife is blunt. Just turn the heat down because it was too high. Cook the onions until they're turned soft. Fine, fine, funny. While the badly chopped up onions are cooking in the rather worn out pan, cut up from the worn out knife, I cut up a bit of garlic. And I'm not keen on uh, messing with garlic because it makes my fingers sting. Roughly chopped up garlic. No need to be overly neat with it. You're going to eat it, not make a picture out of it. Now one rather nice thing to do at uh, 10 to 9 in the evening while doing a bit of cooking in the jazz kitchen will be to have a beer. But I haven't got any. And a mix up. And then we want just the tiniest dash of pepper. Could really overdo this plop. And a mix up. So far, olive oil, butter, onions, and garlic, and a bit of pepper. So the next thing we need is plain flour. The flour is what we need to essentially make the sauce. And there's a name for this kind of floury sauce. And at the moment, I can't remember what that name is. And that happens quite a lot. Uh, partly because I'm getting old and daft, and the other one is just that, well, I'm not really a proper cook. Never mind a chef. That's why I don't know how much of this to put in. Two big spoonfuls of plain flour into there. Then we have a mix-up. And some of that flour has gone up my nose, and it's making me want to sneeze. Once you have mixed it all up, it's going to look like this. So now we need to put some cow juice in it to turn it into a sauce. Made from the loveliest moo cows going. We pour all load in. Oh, and it fizzles away because it's hot in there. In the pan has gone an indeterminate amount of milk. And I'm struggling to mix it up with one hand. Quite a bit of milk stirred in there and it's gone back as it was before. Quite a bit more milk and it looks like this which is still too thick and it looks like porridge. It looks so much like porridge it probably even tastes like it even though it has none of the same ingredients. So clearly we need a whole lot more of the stuff to turn into a proper sauce. Now that's a good amount that time. So after all that extra milk, it now looks a bit like chicken soup out of a can. The kind of soup that doesn't contain any real ingredients. So yes, still not finished. Still need more milk. This needs to be quite runny before it's going to work. It's important to clean as you go along. It doesn't make you a better cook, but it stops your wife from getting on your back. So now, look at this, it's, it's just quite runny, isn't it? 
and that's fine. We don't want it to be finished like that, but it will thicken up because of the flour. It does the same kind of thing as what bread does, where it goes bigger and thicker, and well, I get bigger and thicker all the time, so why shouldn't that? Simmering away for a few minutes. I've just washed my beard. After a while, the sauce will become almost the correct consistency. One's a bit more thickening up than that. But the next thing is a nice big dollop of mustard. You might be thinking, well, they don't call him Captain Mustard for nothing. But, it, you know, in actual fact, mustard is definitely the kind of ingredient that you put in um, cauliflower cheese. And it's very nice. I like it a lot. The uh, next ingredient is the cheese. Here is my cheese and this comes from Aldi. No need to be snobby about it. Aldi do a very good cheese. And I'm a very snobby man and even I like it. There's about half a block cut up there. Plus a couple of bits for me to nibble on. Right, okay, this custard is actually cheese sauce and it is ready. Look at that, super duper. Cauliflower. Yeah, and spin as easily as it. Come on, spin it. Let's not waste much of this. I'm going to keep the leaves in there, the ones that aren't damaged or rotten, and just cook it straight in. Wash the cauliflower. Wash the cauliflower with water in the sink just in case there are any slugs in there, or mice, or elephant droppings, or letters from Santa, I don't know. There, that's quite a lot of cauliflower. And it is uncooked cauliflower. Now, some people will cook the cauliflower first, and then put the cheese on, and then put it in the oven. But cauliflower is very wet, so what will happen is you'll just get loads of water and stuff coming off of it, and it'll go all soggy. A cooking it won't stop it from being wet, but what will stop it from being wet is being in the oven for a while. So just put it in the oven, cook it for a bit longer. Right, that's properly covered in cheese sauce. Step, switch on the oven, turn it up to gas mark, whatever you think suitable. Put it in the oven, walk off and do something else. While you're waiting for your cauliflower and cheese to cook, you can always edit your video about how you make a cauliflower cheese in the meantime. And that's what I've chosen to do. It's almost half past 11 and the food still isn't ready. And to be honest, it's getting a bit too late to eat it. Never mind. <laughs>